we are discussing packages in Java. In the last module, we have introduced the concept of packages that means, how the built in API packages are there in Java JDK and then how a user can define their own package. Now, today we will discuss much more information about Java packages. This is regarding access and then maintaining and then specification. So, today basically discussed mainly we will discuss about how a package can be accessed and so far the access is concerned how the different access specification works in case of packages it is there. So, first thing is that uh, how whenever you are running one program how your runtime environment runtime manager Java runtime invert uh, interpreter can understand that which package is located where. In order to give this information, so it is better is that you can set the class path. Class path is basically a system variable environment variable in any operating system windows in unix or in mac os mac os whatever it is there, there is a way of setting the path. So, class path is one variable environment variable is there you have to set it. So, class path basically should tell that where your packages are located. So, whenever you refer to a package the Java runtime inverter the interpreter will consult this class path name and then get the exact location to locate it. So, this is the three there are three ways in fact by which uh, you can specify the explicitly you can specify the location of a package. So, the first is that it is a default of course, that it consider that all the packages is under your working directory. So, Java runtime interpreter if you do not mention any class path in your environment variable, we will try to find by default any directory which has the same name as the package name that you have mentioned in your import statement and that directory if it is there under your working directory. So, this is a first method very trivial method of course. So, if you maintain one package under a working directory of your program where you want to run it then it will work. The second method is basically setting the class path environment variable this is the way and this is the more uh, sophisticated way I should say because all the time you may not maintain all the package directory under your working directory. You can maintain here and there, there and here. So, that is fine, but if you can explicitly mention that this is the name of the package and this is the class path, it will work for you to access this package from anywhere. It is not necessary that all package should be under your working directory. And second third is explicitly you can call a particular package by the Java C uh, command. So, Java C suppose you want to run one program which is there in say x y z package which is under a b c. So, you should write at Java C a b c dot x y z dot the name of the class file that is there. So, it will run it. So, this the Java and Java C needs to be explicitly mention there. So, these are the three ways uh, it is there. So, you can use it. Now, here again as an example, so that I can discuss about that suppose my pack is the user defined package is there and you can mention that this my pack is under your working directory immediately after your working directory or you can use the two other method class path setting or explicitly mentioning while you are invoking Java C or Java that this is the location. Now, if you mention the class path setting then my pack and then you just mention the class path as C my programs under Java and the name of the directory. So, it is basically to mention that in which root directory or parent directory under which the path that only needs to be mentioned in your class. So, basically Java runtime interpreter will consult this class path in one variable and check that whether in according to that path your package is there or not. If it is not there it will that package does not found or no class file available. So, this kind of command it will be there. 
and here is an example a very simple example that we can consider about it. Here we have declared one class the name of the class is balance and then it is declared in package my pack. So, we, we are basically creating one package the name of the package is my pack and in this pack, package the class is class balance and one thing that it is not here although, but you should consider that this as I already told you that all the class which are belong to a package should be declared as a public. So, here this is required. So, public. So, public access specification it is required if you do not do then you will not be able to use it and here again this is if it is a public and all the access specification by virtue of default access specification is also public. So, these are all basically it is a public class it is a public class and in this under this public class we decide uh, we declare uh, name as a data type string balance val is a type float and there is a method the this is also public method is a constructor and as it is public this is also public. So, it is a public constructor and it also has a void method a show method also public like. So, this is the a typical look of a class basically it will create an object of type uh, class balance containing all these fields and the methods. So, is basically the package the class is there once this package is created we can use it uh, you can use this class file in any program and this is the one class you can define it is basically this my pack can be created under this directory where this this uh, this class is defined. So, this is the class file under an working directory and this is the file in a package. Now, this is the typical look of the program is basically this is the class file again account balance main class because the main method is there and it will able to access all the members which are there without any error because this is a class all methods are class. So, it is accessible to any class uh, from anywhere it is like this because of the class access specification. So, this basically gives a simple example that a class can be created can be stored in a package and that package that class can be utilized in any other Java programs as if it is your own defined class like. So, this is the concept and uh, and then class path if we set the class path of this my pack then that there is a import statement that you have to do it. So, here obviously the import import statement is missing. So, import my pack in this case import my pack and then use it. So, you can use it like that one ok and this import my pack once it is mentioned it will console that Java runtime interpreter will consult that this my pack is a package is located where. So, it is like this otherwise the second way it is that instead of this one we can write import and then full setting x dot y dot this one and then we can write balance that means ok. This means that this is an x is a root directory under this y directory under that directory the my pack my pack and then under that directory this balance file is there. So, this is also one way by which we can specifically tell, tell uh, other than the class path setting is there. So, these are the way that you can use it to define the different way. So, that a location of a particular class belongs to a package can be specified. Now, again uh, in an art cell we have to create your own program the name of the program as we have discussed earlier that account balance dot java and put it in a directory and that directory before the my pack directory whatever it is there. If you put into the same directory as the package also it will work no issue. Then we have to compile the file so that that class file is there and then try to executing the account balance class file using the command whatever it is there and then you can got it. So, it is the basic idea it is there. Now, here you see uh, in this case in this uh, example that I have discussed here account balance is your program. So, it is basically if you see the program here 
this is the account balance is the user defined one class uh, we have created here and this is the package class, but they can be put into together in the same class directly. So, no need to specify uh, explicitly the location of the import statement is not required if you want to put all those things in the same directory actually no import location is there, but if they are in a different directory and then then import statement is a must. Now, here uh, okay, fine. Uh, so, here again uh, okay, so uh, okay, continuing this discussion. So, account balance, balance is the class that we have created as an application Java program we store into the same as a package directory my pack and then compile it, it will work absolutely no problem, no need to this one. Now, see here account balance the class that you have created is now part of the my pack in fact, that means any other program can use it, but again be careful. The main class can be used in any import statement only once. If you want to access one class which is in the package having the main class in addition to the main class in your own application, then again it is a compilation error. So, you cannot do that, you should not do that. So, usually it is good practice that the package should contains only the non main class classes, that is what the thing it is there and you can use it like that. Okay. So, this is the concept that we have discussed about it. Now, regarding importing a package, we have to consider few more cases, few more uh, steps to be considered very carefully, which we are going to discuss now. So, for the import statement is concerned, there are two ways that import can be explained. So, import only the name of the package, it is possible if you decide that package in a class path setting. If you do not do, then you use the dot comma dot statement that dot 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 explicitly specifying the location of the particular package it is there. In this example as we can see, so if package 1 is the name of top level and then package 2 is the sub package and under this package a particular class that you want to access it, then you can write it using import package 1 dot package 2 then dot class name. So, is a dot comma dot uh, the periods actually can be used there. So, either dot as a particular class name explicitly or dot star all classes belong to that package uh, whatever it is there. Otherwise, here uh, this is also one way if you can specify as an example right. So, this basically is an a, a illustration of this concept is basically import java dot util dot date this means that I want to use that date class in my class now and this is also basically I want to import all classes which belongs to dot io packages that is there in JDK. So, these are the basically util and io are the two uh, API packages and we can access it. Okay, so, this is the import statement it is very simple that uh, import statement is there uh, you have to specify it and also we can mention using your own package you can just import package name dot class name the same concept whenever you build a package whether it is a API package or it is a user defined package there is no discrimination you can use you can access in the same way it is API or it is a user defined package. So, the concept is uh, similar is generic rather no difference concept are to be followed. Now, so we have discussed about package maintenance and then how we can access it. Now, I just want to discuss about the access protection for a package, this is very important and needs to be discussed, needs to be learned also very carefully, because it if it is not maintained properly, then either is a compilation error, you will not be able to build your program successfully, so many concepts are there. So, access protection already we have discussed while we are discussing about the information hiding by virtue of three four access specifier default, public, private, protected uh, these things. Now, all these access modifiers are equally applicable to the package classes also. So, we will discuss about how the access protection in, in the context of packages are. Now, so, here is basically the idea about that because a package can play in between the different classes. So, it is basically interplay between classes. So, Java should have a very good visibility control and naming convention equally. 
So, sub classes as you see Java addresses four categories of visibility for class members. It basically visibility for sub classes which are in the same package that means, a class is de declared and a sub class is basically inherited class is also declared and if they belong to the same package this is the visibility one type of is there. The no non sub classes in the same package that is obviously, package is there there are many classes not necessarily sub classes of other classes like this. Sub classes in different package one class belong to say package P 1 whereas, the from the class which belong to P 1 there may be sub class in say Q in other package Q another sub class of the class belong to P is in other sub packages R like this one. So, sub classes in different categories. So, how the visibility can be controlled and then classes those are neither in the same packages nor in the sub classes are there. So, these are the four different ways the visibility needs to be uh, controlled and obviously, for this visibility things are there access uh, specifier public private protected it is applicable. Now, default is not a useful access specification so far the public is concerned this is because the default is applicable to all the classes either in the same program file or in the same packages is there. So, usually people avoid default access specification so far the package is concerned. So, if you have if you use the default access specification then you only limit to that package into that limit to that classes into that directory that packages only. So, all classes belong to a same uh, package can use the default uh, classes that is there, but anyway. So, we will discuss more critically all this access specification uh, access specification namely default private public and protected uh, obviously, we can follow some example to understand the concept it is there. Now, again the table that I want to place it so that all four categories of uh, visibility that can be including the same class. As you know if a, it is a same class any method can access any member belong to the same class. So, visibility is basically true for all members belong to the same class. So, it is same class visibility is the true 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 for whether the access specification you specify it does not matter. Now, if it is the same package sub class that means, a sub class which belong to the same except the private member all other access specification does not have any uh, limitation. So, if you specify the private then no sub class method can access the private member. However, if it is a default it can no modify mean default and then protected and public can be accessible to the sub class. So, this is obvious the same package non sub class that means, it is not a sub class, but belong to the same package. So, private cannot access default cannot uh, default can access protected can access and then public obviously, it can access. So, if it is the same package, but not sub class then it can access it. Now, <coughs> different package sub class. So, a sub class, but that sub class sub class is belongs to the different uh, directories different package. So, private no way default is also no way, but protected it can because it is a sub class and then public it can because it is public and then different package non sub class. So, private cannot access default cannot access protected cannot access whereas, public it can access. So, this is the table it is a similar table that we have discussed in the context of information accessing it is there. So, this is the way you can think about it and then it will work for you. Now, okay. so after having this kind of summary of different access modification it is better to discuss about using some example. Now, this is the one example although little bit uh, complex example because it is really uh, difficult uh, to maintain one simple example to illustrate all the features regarding the access uh, protection in packages. Now, even I have tried it to make it as simple as possible here we consider the two packages my package 1 and my package 2 they are different it is not that okay in some same directory or sub directory whatever it is there. Let us consider two different sub directories are there my package 1 and then my package 2. In this my package 1 we plan three classes class x, 
class y class a which belongs to the my package 1 directory and class y is a basically subclass of class x and as I told you if all the they are member of a package they should be declared as public. So, here uh, these are all public class I have not mentioned explicitly public class. Similarly, here the two classes which belong to the another package my package to also public and z is basically a derived class sub class sub class of the class x, x is again super class belongs to the package 1. So, ok fine. So, this is the organization of the two packages that five, two packages contains five different classes actually x, y, a, z and b out of which y and z are the sub classes. Now, having this organization let us have certain simple what is called the structure of the four five different classes one by one. Let us first have the idea about uh, the first class x which belong to the uh, class package 1. So, we are disc we are dec we are defining we are rather creating or building the class x belong to the package my package 1. Here just note it the class x contains uh, four members including its own constructor and class x is public as I told you it should be declared as a public. Now, here int n, n is an integer type variable which is declared as a public because public is a default. Now, p is a private member, q is a protected member, r is a public member again. So, default int is basically a default access specifier by default as is public. So, it will be public private uh, p is a private q is protected and r is public. So, four members are declared with four different access specification just n p q r we have to remember the default means it is a public private protected and r is public. Now, ok if I ask you r is public this means that any class whether it is belong is a sub class of this x or it is any other class belongs to any other part r is accessible. So, regarding r it does not a problem. Now, here is the problem regarding either default access specification in this case n and then p q all these things. So, n is a public so no issue default is no issue, but again there is a issue of course, we shall discuss it. Now, uh, let us save this class as dot java file x dot java and then compile it and then save it and this uh, this public x is basically constructor which will basically call this and you see so far this constructor is concerned it is a method actually automatic method and this constructor will attempt to access all the members that mean n p q r in this case. So, so far the accessing of this is concerned as it belongs to the same class all these are ok. So, no compilation error it will put whenever you want to compile x dot java file. So, this is the class x file and I hope you have understood it clearly. Now, let us come to the another class file and this is the sub class of class x. So, y extends x. Now, so far this class is concerned you see uh, it does not have any own member of its own. So, no issue, but it will try to access the member which is basically belong to its super class x. Now, here, here you see now here is basically the constructor is basically by using the constructor I want to discuss it as there is a default. So, it is a public. So, you can say public it is and the, this is also public constructor no way. Okay. So, this uh, basically x. So, derive uh, it is basically is a derived class sub class this means that all public members will be accessible and then all protected member will be accessible, but any private will not be able to access this is the concept right and as this class y belongs to the same directory as the class x is apart from this one. So, all the default member there the default member is n is also accessible. Now, so far this statement is concerned this is ok because it is a default access in the same file accessible. Now, here p that is declared as a private uh, p is declared there as a uh, uh, protected right. So, it is also a private. So, private is 
Now, P is declared, let us see what is the P is declared. Anyway, so here okay, let me just remind it that okay, how we have declared the P it is there. Yeah. So, here exactly if you see P is declared as a private and then Q is declared as a protected and R is private that we have to remember somehow to understand this concept it is there. Okay. Now, let us come here. So, here we can see. Uh, so, N is default. So, it is accessible. Now, here P is declared as a uh, uh, private. So, there is a problem because private cannot be accessed by any other class this one. So, that is why this statement will give you a compilation error. Uh, if you put it comment then all the compilation successful otherwise it is there. Okay. And then here if you see the Q, Q is a protected and as a Y is a derived class of this one. So, this is ok and the R is a public. So, it is accessible. Now, in order to run this program successfully this statement should be commented. So, that you can run it if you do not comment it, it will give you a compilation error and compilation error will report the compilation error at this point here only. Okay. So, this is the idea about the derived class subclass of the class X which belong to the my package 1. Now, let us come to the another class that we have already planned which belongs to the package my package 1 is the class A here. So, here is the declaration of class A here. Okay. So, this class A belong to this my package 1, yeah, we have included whatever the other main classes is there anyway. So, class A we have also do not declare any other explicit member of its own, it has the only constructor and our objective is that whether this class A can access any other members belong to this class belong to any other class either x y in the package or not as y does not have any members. So, no question it will consider only any members that belong to x. Now, here look at this one. So, we create an object x of class x that means, we want to access any members that belong to the class x or not. Now, so far this one it is not an error because it will work because n is defined as a default access specification by default it can be accessible to any class belong to the same directory as this class a is belong to the same directory it is possible. Now, here see this p, p is basically is a private and we want to access a private member from other class a here. So, this will report an error. So, it should be commented to successfully right and q is a protected protected cannot be xless by non subclass as a is a non subclass. So, it is an error and then r is a public member. So, it is ok. So, this will work for you. So, here in order to run this. So, this and these two are to be commented. So, that it can successfully run it. Okay. So, this is the class three classes that we have discussed with the three different modifications it is there. Now, let us come to the another package called the my package 2. And in the my package 2 as I discussed it has two classes the class z and class b the class z is basically is a subclass of class x. So, it is, but it is in the different directory. Now, let us see what will happen so far this class z is concerned. Now, so it is z it does not have any members. So, ok fine only the constructor. Now, here this is the default accession means default class member cannot be accessed outside any other class from the class which it So, if it is belong to the class my package 1 and this class z is belong to my package 2 it cannot access this default class specific that, that. So, this is why it should give an error. So, it should be commented. Next is that private as you know private member cannot be accessible other than the class member itself. So, private p cannot be accessed from the class z which is in the other directory or in other packages. So, it should be commented also. Now, q is a protected as it is a derived subclass of x. So, protected member is accessible by inheritance. So, this is correct. Now, public is accessible. So, so far the z class which belong to the another package is concerned. So, it can access 
other than these two it can access other all other things are there. I hope you have understood this concept. Now, this is the z class now let us come to the discussion of another class which belong to the b it is not a sub class of this one is a derived class. So, class b now here b again it does not have any members. So, it is b method is here only now here. So, b is basically here we my package p 1 I am explicitly specifying that I want to create an object. So, x dot x new package I create a x and for this x object I want to create n p I want to access n p q r where n is default in the class. Now, here as it is in the different directory as you know x dot n is not accessible. So, the default variable is not accessible in this program. So, it basically is an error. So, it should be commented and then here x dot p, p is a private member cannot be accessed by any other class belongs to anywhere. So, it is there it is should be right and then q also protected it cannot be accessed anywhere. So, it should be commented however, r is public. So, r can be accessed from anywhere. So, we have discussed about the different access modification if it is placed for some class in one package and then how the distance classes belongs to some other package has the limitation. So, for the accessing of the member is concerned. Now, then okay, fine we can have a demo of this uh, right and then demo is basically you can run this one from the my package one and create the object then you will see whether these objects are created successfully or not whatever the comment I have mentioned here if you put it then this statement will be correct. But if you uncomment all the statement then it will report the errors where the access specification is violated by the rule of the access protection. So, that things is for your understanding if you run this program and then uh, then you will be able to understand more the things clearly. Now, this is regarding the packages. So, for the my package one concerned and one demo program that you can think about it. So, we will discuss the demo in details when we will discuss about it. Now, another demo program that belong to the my package also you can run and you can see you can create it and then you can find it. So, it will create uh, it will create uh, the two things and you can. Now, here I want to mention one more thing is that. So, here in this demo program I just limit the accessing of all the package that those are there, but in that case see suppose I can use import my pack 2 and my package 2 and here also import my package 1 then all the things that is there and here also you can include both the things are there. So, I can create one class file one demo file so it is a demo 3 which basically import my package 1 and my package 2 together and then run all the program and then you will see exactly what will happen basically all these things will be there and then the report or that error will be due at the time of compilation. So, all the class file if you are not able to successfully compile. So, you cannot build the package and once you are not able to put the class file prior I mean after the uh, compilation. So, no way of creating this one if you can successfully create it then demo program will successfully run for you. So, this is the thing that you should consider uh, on the way what you did here. So, this is all about the packages I want to convey to you and that is the concept of the packages that you should uh, have in your hold actually. Our next discussion is basically inheritance related much more we have discussed the simple inheritance and we have also mentioned at the time of that discussion that multiple inheritance is not allowed in Java, but in some situation you know multiple inheritance is not avoidable. It is obviously erroneous or gives lot of ambiguities while debugging your program, but it is also sometimes non avoidable and it makes the programming easy if you can do it. Now, the question is that uh, although technically the multiple inheritance is not possible in Java, but if it is required can I do that that how the multiple inheritance is possible. So, we will discuss about that concept and then polymorphism is also very important concept uh, polymorphism means same thing, but in a different places are there. Now, these multiple inheritance and polymorphism are the two concept which can be achieved by means of another concept interfaces. So, in our next uh, module we will discuss about multiple inheritances and polymorphism 
in the disguise of interface. So, interface is our next topics are to be discussed in our next uh, module. Okay, thanks for your attention.